hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be playing some more Kerbal Space Program. Now today I'm going to be showing off my Delta IV Heavy design with an Orion capsule. Now, this is the Orion Delta IV, so it does have the Orion crew module, but if you guys are any or at all familiar with space right now, NASA's talking about the SLS. Now, Orion will launch on top of an SLS, but this version on the Delta IV, Delta IV Heavy, sorry, it will go into orbit, and that is it. With the SLS, they're most likely going to do a moon flyby, is what they said, but this is just meant to get into orbit and dock like a dragon capsule. Now, I couldn't do, like, I couldn't make it white. Uh, yeah, I couldn't find a way to make this white. You see, I can't do it with any of the Rocket Max stuff. It's either you make it black and white or orange, and these are these parts are not orange, so I went with black and white. So hopefully you guys can settle with that if you choose to replicate this. Now we're starting off with our first stage with three main cells, and we're doing onion-style staging into this center tank here. Now we do have a couple of these tanks disabled. Uh, these top three, I believe, are disabled on the boosters and the top two is disabled on the center one and this is just to add a bit of weight to this craft because this is meant to get into orbit around earth not kerbin as kerbin is a lot smaller then we've got our poodle second stage that it looks a lot like the delta four second stage so i went ahead and put it on there and then my orion design is um it's kind of strange i mean let's take this off but, as you can see, it's fairly simple. It looks like Orion. Let's go ahead and chuck this back on. Hopefully the fairing fixes itself. Edit fairing. Not just fix it. There we go. Perfect. And then we'll chuck back on our stage. Or our big stages. Oh, and apparently we have to rebuild this fairing here because the game glitched out. I'm not sure why it's not letting me close fairing on that. It was earlier. Oh yeah, I had to like close it on the air around it. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm guessing I'm closing it on the other fairing, but whatever. Let's get this thing into orbit and show you what it's about. Now this thing can dock. Um, it's got it's it's got RCS and it's as close as to the center of mass as I can get it. It's not right on it like it should be, but it's as close as I can get it. Let's go ahead and bring this thing out to the launch pad. The only thing I have tested is the docking capabilities of the uh, capsule. And we are missing Jeb, and that's because Jeb had an unfortunate accident. But he will respawn in two hours if I just leave my game running, so. Let's launch. It's got a decent thrust to weight ratio at launch. I could probably slow this down a bit with launch clamps to get make it a bit more dramatic, but I didn't. Also, um, you might want to auto strut this, I just realized. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. But basically, if you if you like more realistic rockets, this one is probably one of the ones for you. Actually, I forgot to test something, but I will I will show you guys that after the launch is over. Oh god, luckily the mainsail engine has decent gimbal, because we almost flipped there. Oh, well we need to go to 45 degrees anyways. Oh, well if our boosters are already out of fuel. But with the- ooh, that did not work as intended, and we flipped. Alright, well I guess this is a good time to test our thing, our launch escape system. Slings us really far away from it, but it staged that, separate that, and it shoots. But, um, basically what I did is I put on two sets of 
Separatrons. One of them was supposed to boost them away, and the other one was supposed to boost them to the side to keep them further out of the way. But my design did not work, and for some reason it boosted it at a weird angle back towards us, which we don't want. And I'm gonna actually turn down this throttle a bit, just because I realized we ended up going too fast at the height we were at. Which is not- which is really good. You want to be going really fast, as fast as possible. But we don't have any type of fins or anything on this rocket, so it's... That's not good. Now you can see we almost start off with half fuel left in the boosters. That's perfectly fine and that's what it's supposed to be. I remember I had to drain fuel. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and re-auto strut the... Capsule. Basically, if you don't know what auto strut is, or if you've never played this game before, auto strut, it's sort of, it takes struts and has an AI place them, instead of you having to do it. And struts are basically, they connect two things together and keep them really secure. Alright, we'll begin turning towards 45 degrees. Separate. Don't hit me. Okay, they didn't. And we're flipping again. Why is that? Point prograde. That way we'll swing around on RCS. That should help a little bit. Engine on. Come on. Regain control. Okay, flip and I'll start burning when we get close to prograde. Mm, burn. Come on, you can get control. There we go. We got control back, although now we are pretty high up. What the? Point prograde, point prograde. All right, there we go, we are fine. Okay, Jesus, that did not go well. That is not what's supposed to happen on launch. Turn back a bit because I realize we're not gaining height as fast as we need to. So this should be a decent angle. We definitely we're definitely gaining a lot of orbital speed, but not enough for er, vertical speed. Yeah, that's the word. Because we need to get up and get our app or highest point past 70 kilometers because that is the end of the atmosphere. On Kerbin. Now we're getting in a bit of a lopsided orbit, but we should be fine. Alright, that's point prograde. Now the reaction wheels, which help steer this thing, are not that strong compared to the size of the rocket. Hopefully they'll be they'll be a bit more effective once we stage all of this off. Get this to like 90,000. Alright. Now this is gonna be a bit harder to see now because of YouTube compression. Let's see, how much how much fuel is left in this? Barely any. Let's go ahead and burn prograde a bit more just to burn that off. Alright, and then we'll stage. Oh. Why did you not trigger? Oh, it did, but did he couple- why did that not- whatever. Let's point radio out. Burn up a little bit. And then we'll point prograde. Prograde is basically forward, retrograde is backwards. Normal is your- is up. Uh, anti-normal is down, radial out is up on this plane, and radial in is down towards that point. Now we are going to prograde because we're going to need to accelerate forward as fast as possible because we need to get into orbit. I'm going to make this video as sort of a beginner's guide to a rocket tree. No, not really a guide, but what a lot of the stuff means. I'll say, you'll hear me say apoapsis and periapsis. 
apoapsis or your apogee is your highest point and your periapsis is your lowest point. Now I just realized how ridiculously weak the poodle engine- or actually no, it's not horrible. But it's- it's kind of weak for this kind of stuff, but it's got a decent ISP, which is basically your miles per gallon in space. You can see this very low fuel consumption. We're about to enter orbit. Got a space station up here that is getting in the way of my view. We want this to be at at least 70,000 meters, and that has been achieved. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and separate. Actually, let's break the fairing off and then decouple. And we'll click action group one to pull out our solar panels. And I believe they are a bit more rotated outward on the actual Orion. But let's time warp around so you guys can see this thing in a better light. Alright, here we go. Now you can see the RCS here on it. Oh god, yeah. And the capsule itself also has RCS, which will help. Our docking port is right on the front here, although we have nothing to dock it to. And here is our terrier engine. Let's go ahead and deorbit ourselves. Deorbit means unorbit. Let's go ahead and point backwards and start burning. Well, we're gonna pull in our solar panels soon. Now I wanna bring this, I don't think we're gonna land in the water like we should. We're gonna land like here in the desert maybe? Yeah, we're gonna land in the desert. But we won't need the stage anymore, but to make sure we don't hit it, we're gonna pull in our solar panels. Point radial in, which is towards the planet, and decouple. That will make sure we don't run into it upon re-entry. Alright, let's lock on to retrograde with our RCS. RCS means reaction control system. That's just a complicated way of saying tiny little thrusters that move you around. But aren't meant to, like, push you anywhere. They're meant to rotate yourself, sort of. Alright, we're coming in. Valentina, Bill, and Bob look pretty happy. Oh god, yeah, don't try and do that with time warp on it. Freaks out. Time warp is just a tool that I use, and it's in the game. Um, basically, it just speeds up everything, so when you're going to the, the mon over here, that's what it's called in this game, uh, you don't have to wait literally three real days. Or... Technically, it's only 18 hours because Kerbal days are shorter, but... Alright. That heat shield's starting to get pretty hot. Just cleared the mountains. You can see we are going to land on the very edge of the desert. Alright, now that we've successfully, now there's no heat anymore, we can, that is not supposed to happen, that is because I use time warp and the physics kind of break with time warps, but basically when you separate the heat shield you make your craft a bit lighter so parachutes are more effective, just a thing, and I'm not sure why the shadow on this thing is broken, because it's like just completely black when it shouldn't be. Alright, let's go ahead and send out our parachutes. Now they're slightly clipped inside here, so the little base part of the parachute you can't see. Alright, so... Okay. I'm surprised those- Oh, it's because we're- We're not exactly at sea level, so they will deploy at a higher altitude. 
Parachutes make sure we don't explode upon impact with the ground. Or slowing us down without becoming a grease spot on the ground. Which we don't really want. Although we can still spin around with the RCS fuel we have left. And boink. So that'll be about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.